Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to part three in our series. So we are on the P3D website, p3d.in, in as in industry, not India. A lot of people seem to think that the company is located in India. It's not the case. They're located in the US, right? Anyway, uh, if this is the first video in the series that you're looking at, in part one, I showed you guys how to get the plugin for Maya to allow you to export GLTF animations, right? I showed you where to get it. I showed you how to install it. So that's video number one. In video two, I showed you how to um, improve your portfolio using all sorts of sweet tricks that I'm going to explain today and because today is going to be a full tutorial on that. So if you missed the first two videos, I'll put links below and I advise you to check them out, all right? So you know what you're looking at. Okay. So that said, uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to take a model from Maya. We're going to bring it into P3D. We're going to do the whole nine yards, right? We're going to do a static model. We're also going to do an animation. So sit back and relax and have some fun. Okay. So we're on the P3D website. Uh, what we need to do first is make a free account. Okay. Now I already have one, obviously, but in your case, you would go to P3D.in. You would click on sign up now. As you do that, you get the usual routine, right? You fill in your email address, username, you come up with a password, confirm the password, agree with the terms of service, and click on sign me up. What you will get is an email, you confirm the email, and then you're ready to go. And then what you do is you go up to login on the same website. Fill out your details, click on login, and boom, there you go. So right now you are in your, or in this case, my gallery. Here's the public gallery over here. If you click on that, here you will see models that have been set to status public by the people who uploaded them to their gallery, right? You don't have to do that. If you're in your gallery and you set everything to private, then nobody will see it but you. If you set it to unlisted, you can share the link with other people and only the people that have that link would see it, right? Just so you know. Now, I um, threw in a couple of old models here just to show you how things work. And uh, let's just quickly uh, open one of these here. And uh, I talked about these tags and how you can have it rotate around and uh, you know identify all the individual components. Pretty sweet, right? And uh, yeah, I'm gonna show you today how all of that works, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into Maya. Okay guys, well, this uh, video is not about the model and whether it's cool or not, it's about the process as always, okay? So what did I do here? I took a model of an oil can, yeah, and then I made a group out of it right there, and then the individual components, tube handle, nuts, and so forth. I applied a texture to each component so I have a color ID map that I can then use in Substance Painter. Now, keep in mind, you don't need Maya to use P3D and you don't need Substance Painter to use P3D. It's just my process. If you have a model, an OBJ or an FBX or a GLTF file and you have textures, you're ready to go, right? I'm just showing you my process because a lot of people on my channel, you know, they use Maya. But, you know, you can use Blender, you can use whatever, yeah? just so you know. Anyway, so I got this model going on here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna export it. So I'm gonna select my group here, go to file, export the selection that I made, and I'm gonna overwrite this guy right here, and I'm call it oil, ca oil can FBX, sorry, yep, yeah, and export selection, overwrite, yes, okay. Next up, we're gonna open up a Substance Painter because I want to create some texture maps. Here we go. All right, guys, here we are. So we're gonna go up to file. We're gonna go to new. And um, if you're a user of Substance Painter, you know how this works, right? I'm gonna choose P Bear Metal Rough as my default here. I'm gonna select my file. Let's go in and I'm gonna select my FBX file. Open that up. And uh, let's see whether I wanna do anything else. I don't wanna use UDIMs. I want to import cameras, so leave everything at default. 1K is fine. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Import mesh normal maps, etc. I don't have any yet, so there's nothing to import, yeah? And we're just gonna click on OK. Give that a second, and there you go. So here we have our oil can, yeah? 
Now, what we're going to do, of course, is we're going to texture this. Now, I can go in here and actually, I think I will go in here and just rename these, right? So first, we're going to look at this. This guy right here is our tube. So let's call it that, yeah? And on that tube, I want to have a plastic material. So let's go to smart materials here. I'm just going to type in plastic. Now, this is not a texturing tutorial, so we're just going to drag a plastic material to it, and that's cool, yeah? Let's go to the next one, and let's turn on the little icon there, so you can, the eye icon, so you can see that's the main can. So we'll call it can, there you go. And let's go with painted steel. And as you can see, I'm going through this quickly because again, this is not the main topic of the video, right? Maybe that one's fine, yeah? So that's our can. Then the next one is our nuts and bolts, yeah? Let's call that nuts. Nuts, there you go. Let's choose steel for that. And let's go in here and drop it right there. There you go. Next one is our handle. Click on the handle. Let's do, I don't know. We'll just do a different color. Why not? There you go. It's fine. And then the last one is our nozzle. Okay. So there you go, and what I'm going to do for the nozzle, uh, we'll just take the top one right there. There you go. Okay. So let's call this done. Yeah, I know it's just uh, drag and drop and slapping it on, but again, not the point. Yeah. So we have this. What we're going to do next is we're going to bake our maps. So we're going to go up here. Uh, actually, we're not going to go up here. We're going to go up here, and we're going to click on bake mesh maps. Yeah. Let's click on that and we're gonna have some settings. 1K output is fine. I'm not gonna touch anything else. I'm just gonna leave it as is. Because I'm not using uh, vertex uh, colors, so we're gonna get a few error messages. That's just fine, right? No worries. I'm just gonna leave it all. I'm just gonna bake all of them, yeah? So there you go. The ID is giving an error. We should get one error per ID. So five or six or so, I guess, yeah. Let's see, five, yeah, there you go. But that's fine, yeah? Okay, we're all done. Click on okay, and now we have a textured model and we have maps baked. So the next step is to export our textures. So we have a exported model, we have export textures, and now we can bring all of that into the P3D platform, right? So let's go to file and export um, textures. It's going to ask us a couple of questions. First of all, where do you want to export it to? Well, I want it to go to my oil can folder, right? What else? PNG, 8-bit, loving it, all good. PBR Metal Rough, fine, leave that alone as well. The texture sets, these are the ones that I want to um, send out, right? And I got a base color, roughness, metallic, normal, height, and emissive for each component, okay? Cool. Um, let's see anything I want to change here. I want to go for, um, let's do an Arnold 5 AI standard. That's cool. And let's see whether I need to overwrite these or not. I don't think so. I think we're all good. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we're going to click on export. Here we go. Yeah, that's okay. Cool, cool. And now we are ready to jump into P3D. Okay, guys. Well, here we are. So it's time to bring in our model. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into a new model. Click on that. You can drag and drop. Here you can see all the options here. OBJ, MTL, GLTF, GLB, SDL, so 3D printable files, FBX files, all this stuff. Yeah. We're going to click on select file and I'm going to look for my FBX file. There you go. My old cam. Let's bring that in. It's going to optimize that for us. Awesome. And what you see here is that it brought it in with my color ID mask. 
Now, I don't necessarily need that because I could have used the OBJ as well because I know the colors. And once I bring in my maps, you will see that they will be tagged, okay? But that's fine. So let's start at the top here, mesh and materials. So we have a base model. You can replace it, but why would we, right? We just got this one in. Free and sets, leave that alone. We only have one, yeah? Uh, materials, single or multiple. We have multiple, as you can see. So we're gonna leave it at that. Here is a list of the materials we have, and these are the original color IDs that I brought in Maya. If I named them in Maya, they would be here as well. These are the names of the shading groups, just so you know. But it's easy to identify, and I'll show you why. If I click on Lambert 4, you'll see that the uh, handle here will kind of light up for a second, right? If I go to Lambert 3, that's the green part. Here, here's the main can. You can see that easily, yeah? Material settings, so uh, realistic PBR, great. I got the option here to plug in base color, metalness, roughness, all of that, right? And I got the letter T right here to load in textures. So let's do that. So you don't necessarily have to use all the maps you have. Uh, we're just gonna do a few. The process is the same everywhere, right? So let's start with our main can right there, yeah? Right now it's red, which is my color ID from Maya. I'm gonna click on the T to load up a texture. And I'm gonna click on new texture. And I'm gonna go into my list and I'm looking for the oil can base color. So my diffuse map, right? Click on that, click on okay. And now I have my, uh, my color on the main part of the can here, yeah? You got some advanced options here that you can look at, um, you know, that you want to change or not, the offset, the scale and all that, but we're not going to do that, but just so you know it's there, yeah? And then you can go in and you can plug in additional maps on that same item. So let's say a metalness, right? Let's say we've got, we're going to go in here and we're going to look for the main oil can, yeah? And uh, let's see, we got metallic right here. Let's plug that in. And you can see on the edges around the screw top here on the top, you see some sheen coming up, yeah? Um, let's see, we'll do a roughness map. Let's go to this guy, click on the T, again, a new texture. Uh, roughness right here, there you go. Not a huge difference because I didn't bake any normal map details or anything like that, but just so you know how that works. And then you can go down all the way. You can plug in any map you have. If you baked an ambient occlusion map, you can plug that in. I'm actually not sure whether we baked one or not. We went through it pretty fast, so I don't think so. No, but if we had selected that in Substance Painter, we would have that option. And just so you understand the method of plugging in all your maps. Okay, cool. So let's say uh, you got that done. We're quickly going to apply uh, the textures and I'll just go with a diffuse map right now so it doesn't take too long, okay? So we got our plastic tube thing here. We're gonna go to base color. We're gonna jump in and we're gonna call that, uh, let's see, tube, uh, tube base color. There you go, all right? So we got that. We're gonna to go to the next one, which is our handle. We're gonna to go to base color. Let's plug in a new uh, texture. Let's look for our handle. Uh, handle base color, there you go. Okay, what else? Next one, our nuts and bolts. Go in here, let's go to our, the base color for the nuts. That's the main body, we already did that. And then we got five, and I think we already did that as well. Okay, I think that's our nozzle actually. Yeah, it is. Okay, so we're gonna go in and we're gonna put a texture on a nozzle. Okay, guys. 
So let's call that done, right? You understand the process. Now, um, if you go through this, you see we've got all these options. You have a few options down here where you can uh, repeat a texture wrap, a texture filter, double-sided flat shading. I'm not gonna do all that, but just so you know it's there, yeah? Okay, so let's go to the next one. We're gonna go to the model settings. Now, of course, you're gonna name this, so we're gonna call this oil can. And here you can, um, you know, call it whatever you want to call it, red oil can. And you could, for example, put a link in here to a YouTube video or a link to a URL to an image, right? If you're going to share this online, it's important, of course, to add tags. And these tags will help you to improve your um, sales engine optimization ranking uh, if you want your portfolio to be found, okay? Now the fixed orientation, you can choose that if you want, right? You can go around and do whatever. And the default camera, you can reset that, okay? So um, don't forget to save the changes. We'll do that. It's working on it, cool, cool. And on the top one, let's make sure that we save that as well. We don't wanna lose that information, yeah? Okay. So there it is. We're going to go to the next one, hotspots. Now that's one I really like. So we're going to add a hotspot. Um, we're going to click on the plus key and we're going to give this a name and let's go with the nozzle. Okay, cool. So next thing we want to do is we want to place that nozzle. So we're going to click on that. And as we move around here and I go up here and I click, it will place that where the nozzle is, right? And then I have options to parent the hotspot, uh, which is to create a hierarchy, right? But there's nothing else here, so we're not gonna do that. But just so you know, you can. Again, here in the description area, you can give it a full description of who we want it to be. Uh, let's, I don't know, we'll call it tip nozzle um, X, Y, Z, two, three, four, like a part number or something, yeah? Cool. All right, so we have that. Um, let me save the changes here. Let me just jump back in. Okay, so here's our nozzle. Let's see if we covered everything. I think so, yeah. Next one is we're gonna go and customize the viewer. Now, this is very cool. First of all, you can choose whether you want to have HDRI image as the environment to light up your object. You obviously see the light on the oil can that is created by this HDRI image. You can choose legacy if you want. I personally uh, like using this option, HDRI, yeah? Now, you can display that environment if you want, kind of like what you do in Substance Painter as well, but I don't see the need because you have the option to place a, a colored backdrop in there, which is even cooler, yeah? So that's cool. Uh, intensity, you can change the rotation. If you want to rotate that HDRI image, let's say 90 degrees, you see that the light moves around, okay? Uh, bloom strength, I'm not a fan of bloom, but you can use that if you like, right? So let's leave that at a thousand. There you go, not 4,000. Come on, don't mess with me. Hmm, I don't know, sorry about that. Anyway, uh, we're gonna skip that. Uh, camera settings, perspective view. Now you have the option to use orthographic. Now, because you are displaying your model, I would definitely go with perspective because it looks more natural. But there are situations where you would want to choose with orthographic, okay? So I'm gonna leave it at that. Now the focal length, that is super cool and super important as well. Now, if you don't know what focal length is, imagine photography. Imagine you have a camera and you're looking through that camera and you're looking at your objects, right? If you have, let's say, a eight millimeter lens, it would be a super wide angle, right? And um, that's used for landscapes and whatnot, and not even that, that's even too wide for that. If you're taking a portrait image through a camera, it's maybe 50 millimeter, 80 millimeter, if you want to be more close up. Now, how does that relate to a 3D model? Well, if you, let's say, model a character, right? You want it to look like a portrait shot. 
So you would choose a focal length of something like maybe, I don't know, 50 millimeter, 60, 70, 80, something like that, right? If you created an environment, it would be more like maybe 20 millimeters. So that's why that is important. And you can actually change that setting. And you see how when you do that, it warps, right? And that is what you need to be careful with. So uh, right now, focal length is about 25, which is fine for this object, yeah? Okay, what's it, what else? Um, the viewer background, like I said, you don't have to have the HDRI visible because you can go in here and choose a background. Now, I didn't really load any, but you know, let's say you want this carbon fiber, right? You see that your entire backdrop turns into carbon fiber, very cool. And of course, you can go in and load your own just clicking on new background here yeah? vignetting what if you want to use your own logo in the backdrop how cool is that right um, you can use a png file a transparency file with your logo on it uh, that way your portfolio becomes super unique and they can immediately identify that it's yours yeah now uh, let's see, um, you have the option to choose your navigation style, uh, trackball or um, uh, turntable. I'm just going to leave that alone. Viewer defaults, um, let's see, uh, yeah, we covered that. Aug augmented reality, uh, I'm not going to cover this here because I, I can't right now, um, but that's something I need to read up on and I will at some point. Uh, you have the ability to turn that on or off. Yeah, I'm just gonna turn it on and leave it at auto. Okay, be careful. Make sure you save your changes. Let's jump into the next one. Now, this one right here, this is kind of uh, self-explanatory, right? So here's a link where you can share, you know, your um, your model. And you can choose to leave it on unlisted, public, or private, like I said, right? If you just want it for yourself, leave it a private. If you want to share it with a client, for example, at some point, unlisted. You don't want it to be public so everyone can see it unless it's for your portfolio, right? So I'm leaving it unlisted. I'm the only one on this, but let's say we're working on this model as a team. I did a model, somebody else is going to upload the, the textures, somebody else is going to set up the, the view uh, settings and so forth, yeah? What I can do is add other users to this. So you have collaborators, and in this case, I'm the owner, I can edit, I can add a collaborator and say that they can only view it, right? So for a client, for example, you can put in the name and say, this is the name of the client, and they can view the model, but they can't change it, okay? Pretty important because you don't want to give away your work for free, yeah? Uh, let's see, what else? So that's that. Um, then uh, we covered this. Let's go to the viewport display style. Now, we talked about this in video two, but for those of you who haven't seen this, this is the full model, textured and all that, right? Next one is full model plus wireframe. We have shadeless, so without, um, without shading plus wireframe. We have just a clean model. We have clean with wireframe. We have my favorite, the X-ray. X-ray with wireframe and then wireframe only. Yeah, I'm gonna go back to full. The thing here is you might want to load up your model and you only want this to be visible or you only want this to be shared with your client or you want to create a link for the x-ray, a link for the full, a link for the full plus wire, so you can share them individually, yeah? So a lot of options here. Okay, uh, let's see, we talked about that. Now, the next one here, spin model auto rotation, is of course very cool. And as you can see, as before, the tag or the, uh, the hot spot, I should use the correct name, is moving along with it. If you have technical models with parts, with components that need to be named, if you have part numbers, if you have anything like that, maybe you made a character for um, a game, right? And you want to explain all the individual components, a soldier with a, uh, a backpack and an ammo belt and a rifle and all that. Yeah, you get the idea. Okay, then uh, the download option here, download this model, okay? Allow other people to download. 
allow other people to download the snapshot images. You can choose what they can download, okay? You can turn it on or off for the model and for the snapshot. Pretty important to set that up correctly, yeah? Navigation style, you can um, set it up for use with the mouse, left mouse, middle mouse, right mouse, and so forth, with uh, certain keys, or if you got a touch screen with touch screen swipes, yeah? Then, of course, this one, uh, crucially important, um, embedding code and sharing. What if you want to share this model to Facebook with all the settings you just created, or to Twitter, or to your teams, or to a forum, website, blog, or simply by copying the link, yeah? You can do that. And again, if you're sharing this with a client, you can send them the link. So this basically covers everything for the stationary model. Now, what I wanna show you next is the option to animate. And you will see there will be an additional um, icon in this list right here. Now, depending on what level of account you set up, you can have a free one. And I'll just show you here for a second. I'm just gonna log out quickly, yeah? Let me just make sure everything is saved. I think it is, yeah. Okay, good. I think it's saved. Yep, okay. So we're gonna log out. We're gonna go to sign up now. And uh, yeah, you do all that. And then once you do, you will come to, and I'll just type it in manually. To the subscribe page, yeah? Now, you have the option to go completely free and you'll have a free basic account and you can get started, right? And you got storage space. Keep in mind, all of this is online, it's in the cloud which makes it so, so cool. Because if you go, let's say, to a client and you want to show your model, the only thing you need is internet, right? You can, sh you can show it on your tablet, on your phone. You don't have to drag around your laptop and all that. Super cool, yeah? Now, if you want more options, you can go towards a paid version, right? And you can see that you can even go to $1 a month. And as soon as you go up, you see that, for example, your storage goes from 100 megabytes to one gigabyte, just for $1 a month. I mean, come on, right? So you go to two, and as you move up, you see that now suddenly you got four gigs. Uh, when you jump to six dollars you now have a plus account and you've got a whole lot more options now if you decide you want to use this for your business commercially and i'm doing this as well right you get to the range of their premium account and that's what i got right now 50 bucks a month keep in mind that if you can make a difference um with, uh, within groups of hundred thousands of 3d artists getting more jobs, getting more work, it's a good investment, right? Here you have all the, um, the bells and whistles, yeah? Uh, you know, uh, unlimited uh, models, public, private, unlisted, all unlimited, 50 gig storage. Um, you know, you can do all the full animations, all the interactive annotations, all of that. So that's something you need to choose. And once you start out somewhere here and you want to just bump up, you can do that, yeah? Okay, that said, I'm gonna log back in and we're gonna talk about animation. Okay guys, well now for the uh, coolest part. I would say cool part because I think it's pretty much all cool, but in the animation part, yeah? So if I click on this and I open that up, this is a super simple animation that I created as a test, yeah? I created it in Maya and it's just a, a cube moving and I exported it as a GLTF file. That's the reason why I did video number one, to explain where to get the plugin, how to install it, and how to use it, yeah? So, super simple animation. Now, as you can see here, I have uh, one of these uh, hotspots, right, connected to it that drives the animation, and let's get rid of that, right? So we're gonna go in here, we got this animation one, we're gonna click on that little cross thing, and we're gonna save the change, yeah? So now, it's just driving the animation itself, but there's no hotspot for that. You do see a new icon here, the animation settings icon. And when I click on that, you see that you have a couple of options. 
first of all, the whole range is what I want it to be centered to. So if I got an animation starting here and ending up here, I want to see the whole thing, yeah? You have the option to go in here and say, I want to focus on the start. Let's say you have a walk cycle and you just want the part where somebody walks away. You want the middle or do you want the end? I'm just gonna leave it at auto, yeah? Then the available animations. I only have one animation in this, um, in this individual scene that I exported. If I had multiple, let's say a character, I got one animation to move the arm, I got one animation for a walk cycle, I got one an from, uh, animation for something else, I could have added multiple, but I only have one. So this is the one it is, yeah? You can uh, make it visible or non-visible, yeah? Playback settings, it's set to play once, you can loop it, but I'm gonna leave it at uh, play once, and you can control the speed. So what if I want it to be 0 0.1? Save the changes. It would be super slow, as you can see. Too slow in my opinion. So let's go back to one and save changes. So that's what you can do. Now, the cool thing is with these hotspots, you can control the animation. So we're gonna go in here, we're gonna create a new hotspot, right? And let's call this animation control. But in the example of that Tesla truck, it could also be a tag that says open trunk or take gun out of jacket or whatever that may be, right? Now, uh, what you can do here on the focus actions is say that you want to link that to the animation, right? And then you can say, what do I need to do when it's finished? Well, what you want is to play again, but in this case with a negative speed because you just want it to reverse like that, right? Pretty cool. And here, leave action. Same thing, yeah? So you got the focus action, you got the leave action. And actually what we'll do here in playback mode is um, I'm gonna set that to play once. That is gonna stay on one because I want the leave action to be on negative one, yeah? So that's gonna be animation as well, you need that. Then play again, uh, yes, we'll do that. But negative one. Okay guys, so what do we have so far? We have our cube, we have our animation, we have our tag, yeah? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna give it a go. And there you have it. Now, I want it to go back. That's all there's to it, yeah? Again, guys, use your imagination. There are so many things you can do here. You can have machine parts coming apart and going back together. You can have a character making a certain movement, you know, um, hitting with a sword, shooting with a pistol, taking it out of the coat, all that kind of stuff, right? You can have animations trigger animations. There are tons and tons and tons of things you can do. A lot of information can be found on the website, um, tutorials or whatnot, but this should be more than enough for you to get started, okay? So I uh, would advise you to definitely check it out. Like I said, it's free. Uh, all the links you need are below. Um, that said, I'm gonna have some fun with this. I hope you will as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys next time. Bye.